So last night we all changed our clocks and gained an extra hour of sleep, hopefully. I like this daylight savings time a lot better than the one where we spring forward. Daylight savings is a funny thing, isn't it? No matter how we explain it, one could say that it's a little bit like humans are trying to manipulate time, that which is ultimately uncontrollable. And this whole process of falling back in the fall and springing forward in the spring, it wreaks havoc on our bodies. But it's impressive that someone somewhere decided to do it and that all of us somehow, even though we grunch, follow along. I doubt that many people actually stay up until 2 a.m. to watch the time actually jump ahead to 3 a.m. or fall back to 1 a.m. That must be the closest we get to some sort of time warp. I guess it would be a little bit like staying up until midnight on New Year's Eve, which I gave up for Lent some time ago. <laughs> Um, when one year turns into the next, when December turns into January, when today turns into tomorrow. The funny thing about tomorrow, though, is that as soon as you get there, it's today again, right? There is a silly song. It was featured on a Muppet show many years ago about a small town in southwest Ohio its name is actually Morrow, M-O-R-R-O-W, which, as you can imagine, leads to all kinds of confusion, and it lends itself to all kinds of jokes. The song is about someone who's trying to catch a train to Morrow, but, of course, misses the train going today, and so would have to wait and go tomorrow. The song goes on and on, but at one point, the clerk at the train station calls out in the song, for the train today to Morrow, if the schedule is right, today it gets to Morrow and returns tomorrow night. Okay, I thought you all, all would laugh. <laughs> tomorrow seems to be one of those elusive places we are always looking ahead to get to but can't ever seem to get there. Remember the musical Annie? Annie sits at her window in the orphanage, and she looks toward tomorrow, only a day away, whenever she's feeling hopeless, because she knows in her heart, in her soul, deep down within her, that there's always hope, and it is in tomorrow. Well, our traditional day, our traditional word for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 to 44. And it's about hoping for another day. It's a familiar um, story about the death of Lazarus and when his family is hoping that Jesus will come before he dies. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came were with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep as well. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he have opened the eyes of the blind man? He who had opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was laying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, God, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you were always here near me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. So what the scripture that I read didn't tell you is the pre-story, which is Lazarus was dying and his sisters called Jesus, but he didn't come right away. So that when he does arrive, Lazarus has already been dead. For the better part of a week, Mary is weeping when Jesus came to her and Jesus also cries. But everyone, everyone wonders the obvious question, couldn't Jesus have kept Lazarus from dying. But Jesus does better than that. He goes to the tomb where, G where Lazarus was buried and tells them to move the stone from the door. Of course, all of this has a layer that we already know, which is this is a pre-illusion um, to the story of Jesus and his death. And when the stone is rolled away, Jesus calls into the tomb, Lazarus comes out, and Lazarus does, bound with strips of cloth from head to toe. It's a strange and sometimes troubling story, one that simultaneously gives us hope and raises more questions than it does answers. Is this a historical story? Did this really happen? Could this happen? And would it happen again? Is eternal life something that happens in some far off tomorrow? Or something that happens now? Where are we in this story? Today or tomorrow? Are we looking forward to something that God has promised us? or celebrating what God has already done? Well, the gospel writer is telling us both. That's the great tension in our Christian tradition. Everything we celebrate is based on just that. God has done great things for us, and we rejoice, but there's more. God will do great things for us. It's like we're standing at a turning point in history with the past behind us and the future ahead of us. It's like we stayed up till midnight on New Year's Eve. It occurs to me that this is a week when we're standing in that in-between place singing with Annie about tomorrow. There are several reasons that this week is one of those weeks. We're waiting for an important election, not just for president, but for many local, state, and national offices. There's someone here today who's on the ballot. We may differ on who and what we want in this election and in the future. But most, if not all of us, are very passionate about who and what we want for tomorrow. We're sitting on that ledge thinking about tomorrow. Our church is in the middle of a stewardship campaign right now. And every year, as a congregation and individually, 
We look to the past and we celebrate what God has done. And we look to the future, making plans and building dreams. And it's fitting, I think, that we're concluding our stewardship campaign this year on this week, on All Saints Day. After all, on our angel wings, there are the names of our former ministers. We're doing ministry today because of the generosity of those who came before us. They endowed us with a building and a spirit. This is an important campaign. We haven't been together for the better part of a year, and we don't know when we will be together again. Will you make an investment in the future, believing that we will all be together again and that great things are in our future, that we have the potential to be bigger and better than ever? We have fabulous plans for 2021 to put together, for example, a children's bell choir to enhance the activities of our older children. We want to provide something to excite and involve them so that they will stay and perhaps bring their friends. That's just one of the exciting plans we have. Another reason that we sit on that window ledge looking back and looking forward is that today we honor the people we've lost and in part, it's for them that we look back, but we also look forward. And when we look to the future, their legacy is in our minds. Let's remember, with God's help, we've served people all over this community in all kinds of ways. We've donated hygiene pantry supplies, and then you heard Paul talk about the school supplies, to those who need them in our community. We're ready to have a baby shower for parents who are welcoming a child but may not have enough to take their little one home. Nurses throughout our community offer these bags full of layettes and all kinds of things that they will need, diapers and formula and blankets and things that they will need in the first few weeks of their child's life. This is the way the saints of this church and our families have set before us a generosity of spirit. And with God's help, we've committed a strong and vibrant music program, even through the challenges of COVID. This is another way the saints who've gone before us have challenged us. With God's help, we've done behind the scenes work on everything from fixing our aging building from leaking in the basement to holes in the eaves where the raccoons and squirrels and birds get in, to the very not exciting stuff that's so important for rebuilding what we're doing. And that's also the way of the saints. With God's help, we've gathered for worship in creative and meaningful ways that sometimes have been tough. And we've helped each other grieve and we've celebrated together, we've welcomed new friends, that's the way of the saints. And then we can say with the saints, the Lord has done great things for us, and we have rejoiced. You know, tomorrow is a hard place to get to, and we aren't there yet. There are dreams that God has for us that we haven't gotten to yet. And maybe we thought we'd be there by now. Because like Annie, we may be sitting on that proverbial window seat wondering if tomorrow will ever come. We couldn't be, well, we might be feeling a little discouraged in our personal lives. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of this pandemic. I want to go to a restaurant again and sit inside. Are you with me? I want to get together with friends in my home and have them over for dinner. Are you with me? I'm sick of this pandemic and I'm not sick like COVID sick. I'm emotionally sick. Perhaps we're anxious to get going forward 
without the presence of some of the saints. Or coronavirus is wearing heavily upon us. And like Lazarus's family, we wonder, why do we have to wait so long? Is there any hope? Can we just be honest about that? We're kind of tired of waiting. Or maybe we're tired of waiting for this darn election to get here. Or tired of all those commercials. Can they just be done for heaven's sakes? A year ago, we might have been thinking we were looking ahead to tomorrow and all that we hoped, and now it is tomorrow, or really today, and we're looking ahead to the next tomorrow and wondering how and when is this all going to happen. So yes, we have some work to do, and we've got to be intentional about creating the future that we want. So if it's the church we're talking about, we have to be intentional about creating community in new ways during coronavirus. We have to keep the faith and show up for distanced events, give when it's possible, invest in our future. We have to continue to invite people to church and to speak enthusiastically about what our church is doing. Our church is continuing during this pandemic. If it's the election we're talking about, of course, we have to vote. But not only that, we must pull together no matter what offices and who is elected. Our nation has been divided too long. It is time to come together and be a part of the change we want to see. We need action, not complaining. And we need involved citizens making a difference in our communities. If it's All Saints Day we're talking about, we need to take a lesson from our saints and emulate them. It's a good time to dedicate ourselves anew to not only remembering them in our minds and our hearts, but remembering them by actively imitating their actions. We can be involved in causes that they embraced we can donate in their memories. We can volunteer in their honor. We can serve in thanksgiving for their lives. We can make a difference because of them. Tomorrow. It's a wistful word. But it also can be an optimistic word. On this daylight savings time, when we've enjoyed an extra hour, Let's commit ourselves to making a difference. We don't often stand on the cusp of so many opportunities. There's just a little bit of tomorrow. Our God promised tomorrow in our every day. It's a promise that every day, in every moment, God is rolling away the stone that keeps us inside in whatever cloths are binding us. And in every moment, the tomb is opened and God is peering in and calling us out and saying in a loud voice, if only we could hear it, come out because something is happening. We do not know what always and we don't know that we fully understand. But something wonderful happens there at the edge of the tomb when the stone is pushed away. And we are right to think of another tomb, another stone that is pulled away. And today, we st stand near the edge of the tomb of the saints that we have known and loved and honored. And we can hear, along with God's, their voices calling to us to come out. Come out. The saints call us to a faithful tomorrow. And something happens that moves us from yesterday to today to tomorrow. That is hope, not just for today, 
but for tomorrow. The Lord has great things for us. And we give thanks that we, this week, are standing on the cusp of a new day. I give thanks for that hope. Come out. Come out. Come out.